glory be to god my dear brothers and sisters a warm welcome to one and all of you it's been a wonderful time so far that we have been benefiting through our ministries which god had opened um to us and i would say the first leap compared to some of the great ministers to god but i never walked in comparison that i couldn't do this like that brother i couldn't do this like that sister no each one of us are unique before god and god opens up that opportunities right many opportunities and many times he opens it that's the beauty you know and and that that's what disheartens me also at times why because many brothers have not paid attention or uh, they they did not hear the voice of god is what i could sadly convey in this quorum that we are meeting together as a family right you all keep hearing this voice but only thing is you are not paying attention right you're hearing it but you're not paying attention somebody is saying hey there is a pit there is a pit don't fall and you're busy talking over the phone straight into the pit and then you break your bones or maybe you're killed and that's where you got to be very very watchful against the wiles of the devil one side and the other side is walking in diligence considering that god is the one who is governing you god is the one who is you know nurturing you god is the one who is nourishing you all these things he do he he is uh, doing or he is uh, into all of these is because to make us benefit of what has been kept in store for you and me right without a purpose god did not send us to earth there is definitely a divine will a divine plan but you have not paid attention or you have not asked god of it you are very very mindful of all your worldly pleasures worldly deeds this and that you know you have begotten three kids and you are busy running after one after the other i'm not saying you shouldn't have three kids you can even have four kids or five kids but provided you understand the very reason why god sent you to earth it's not to beget kids it's not to bring them up it's not to build a house or build a car what have you done for god what is the purpose for your existence definitely not these are all earthly duties sorry bringing up kids yeah, even all the animals the living stock they also take care the cattle takes care of its calf right the lion takes care of its cubs and cats takes care of its kittens we all read that in the kindergarten lkg is right nursery school teaching so don't please think that you have already done enough i've ran for the family earthly duty what about your spiritual duties and responsibilities you have not done anything or maybe you have done and you have not realized see that that is the beauty of some brothers and sisters right they don't even realize they are already into the spiritual duties and responsibilities those are the people about whom jesus talks in matthew 25 when i was in hunger you fed me when i was shivering in cold you gave me that clothing and when did we do all of this to the least whom you have done you have done it to me jesus said that super all right warm welcome to the series where we are dealing through this genealogy an evolution of christianity or a christian congregation christianity some people by tradition they take it as or some people are like you know um spirit filled uh, manner spirit filled churches pentecost some people charismatic way all about prayer brother i'll keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying good what are you praying about <laughs> same prayer same pattern same paper every day you are not growing right you got to be the doer of what you pray or what you meditate get into the field and god's going to help you all right now whatever may be your interpretation see i am not against prayer i pray the most right and um, i definitely pray a lot um, you know see praying has different varieties in it right you get into fasting you get into morning worship or uh, in the middle of your bed right you get up to drink a little bit of water and you you end up praying for 30 minutes and that's another variety of prayer and worshiping you are not able to pray sometimes you are only able to worship because so overwhelmed in anguish and uh, some grievous moment or a tragic incident took place in your life and that's another form of praying yeah the holy spirit will intercede for you yeah with the words 
uh, he utters the prayers on your behalf that you do not know uh, you know because you're already grieving and he also grieves for you there is varieties of prayer you want to know about the importance of prayer what to pray what not to pray and all that that is another series we have done right importance of prayer the series name it's available in our playlist okay we are dealing with the foundational principles of our lord jesus on which he spoke and built the christianity as a congregation or as one body and he is going to be married to the church bible says in ephesians 5 the last few verses you take and read jesus christ will be married to the church or he is married to the church already and he expects us to walk in that um what is a walk in that relationship being truthful right husband and wife they must be truthful to each other and the relationship is long lasting difference of opinion please sort it out don't build up build up that egos am i bigger you are uh, smaller than me i am bigger than you don't don't end up in such egos and it's all about like consistently walking in relationship with the lord jesus and that's what it means being married to christ being married to christ right and we are already married because on the day he shed the precious blood he has purchased us for a price and we belong to him and likewise don't take in carnal tense right is not husband we are wives not like that but we are one body we are united as a family we are one in all right on the same lines on the fifth principle we are stuck and that's talking about the law of forgiveness in fact jesus said that love the uh, you know sorry not love the lord god um, forgive ask for forgiveness from god of your sins and that introduced the law of forgiveness as what sins could be possibly forgiven by god and what sins cannot be is what we are trying to deal uh, these days and as an event of that discussion i ended up talking for 30 35 hours by now i think yeah i want to do a thorough study beloved i'm telling you this with all of my heart uh, we, we don't do this thorough study then what happens is we have not understood what the very reason why jesus was sent to this earth what were his preachings what were his actual teachings you are not clear on the foundations you are you are nowhere close to jesus and you are not close to his principles ideologies you are far away from him yeah lips you speak but your heart is yeah you utter something in your lips but then your heart is far away from that person you say how how great it is to meet you again and all that but inside you will be whatever <laughs> you know what it is but when you meet certain brothers it comes bubbling out of your heart and that could be seen in the face and your reactions the way how you hug them and kiss them no don't end up kissing somebody else's wife i mean to say you know that brotherly love to possible extent don't touch anyone right especially opposite sex don't touch it's not a good habit leave them yeah j- just convey that it will be seen on your face how much you love that sister love that brother and you have been longing and not 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 with that lustful attitude or flirting attitude but that 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 joy that you are united in christ that is actually what is called as you know having the true love for christ but then when you walk with that attitude obviously you will receive the forgiveness of god why because you are walking according to his laws and commandments according to his calling so today on the same lines we will be reading from luke chapter 17 verses 1 to 4 will be our meditation verse jesus here is it's going to be a short session we will see how best to cover within the limited time jesus warns of an uh, of offenses you know you know people you know get offended like anything why you would have meant in some tense but the person who would have understood something from you would have understood in a different tense and there comes the struggle there comes the war cold war and you end up breaking that relationship which you had built out of you know so many years um um in fact from childhood some people are together but then one word one word no that's enough for them to you know break that relationship and uh, if you would be digging properly and seeing 
it is about the misconception or misinterpretation or misunderstanding or misapprehension all of them convey the same meaning by the way um he would have meant something but this brother would have talk, uh, taken in a different tense then what happens is you continue to battle against the brother in your prayer room you continue to build that strife that hatred in your heart because your understanding was different what it takes for you to walk to that brother or a sister and uh, you know ask them did you mean it this way did you mean it that way maybe they are angry the way how you are asking but if you are polite i don't think anybody is going to be angry i just want to have a clarification you meant something like this did you mean it this way or that way please i'm i'm not able to take this easy or i'm not able to understand this clearly therefore i'm asking you to please clarify this for me and they're going to clarify it right and then the thing is over so another thing is many people get into offense especially when they are criticized for their on their spiritual deeds on their holy deeds that's where actually jesus is coming from is what i think but we will be reading from the bible what is jesus perspective is what we are going to read and understand today isn't it when you are so holy and righteous really you are i agree many brothers and sisters are just like pauls of the world and just like jesus many people have built their character like jesus but then when somebody comes and criticizes them they forget jesus teaching they forget jesus teaching that many people will offend you many people will hurt you many people even goes to the extent of killing you then what happens you get offended then you are not the child of god look at stephen it was not a offense all the brethren they came together and they threw stones at him for people accused him falsely they called him a blasphemer how dare you say this jesus who was a criminal whom we crucified personally you are able to see him from heaven that to seated on the right side of his father in heaven this is the very reason why we crucified that fellow jesus because he was blaspheming you know his words were blasphemous and then you are making the same statement are you trying to fool us they kill them but you know what the last verse the acts chapter 7 last verse you take and read the statement registered by stephen that was his death sentence or no, i would not sentence death statement right before death he says let, let please do not charge them for the sin that they have committed against me what does it mean yeah he first of all all the sins are forgiven right with knowingly unknowingly whatever and secondly just because of that one word prayer or one sentence prayer all the fellows who stood there and stoned them to death god would have nullified their sins that's the beauty that's the beauty of not being in offense or not getting offended right don't get offended why bible says that why because for your sake the people who were supposed to burn in hell for your sake god forgives them because they deserve to burn in hell for the crime they commit against us god may not inquire them today it may sound that they were they were right why because with the crime that they are charging right with the punishment with it uh, they are charging against you will be fulfilled god allows it to test your faith and my faith correct he will be testing our faith our stand for god when you are being persecuted for christ when people come against you how loving you are how gracious you are how merciful you are matthew 5 43 to 48 says that you know bless those who persecute you how are you doing are you doing well or not god test your spirit of humility according to philippians 2 and matthew 6:14 yeah are you having that lowliness in your mind you're very humble servant of god you are holy you are righteous agreed according to philippians 2 3 your lowliness in mind will be put to test how are you going to be put to test there will be 10 challenging brothers and 20 challenging sister all of them will circle you on one fine day all of them will be start to will be starting to throw um curses at you tantrums about you heresies on you um, and then they will be building stories they will irritate you maybe they do it out of envious heart bitterness yeah they are the agents of the devil fine but what will be your reaction 
based on which god will judge how your sins are going to be forgiven right what is your position before god will be clearly determined on your reaction to such people how do you respond are you all with me now i was just laying down the context because the moment you understand the uh, actual meaning of this offense by concept by doctrine by definition then i think it is not a big deal for us to understand what jesus is trying to say of course jesus tells many things very very plainly it's very simplistic to understand uh, however i want you to also understand that even from the practical tense these are the things what we go through at workplace right they keep noticing you you're walking with bible you're reading bible you're speaking from bible then they will throw some challenges then you behave like a demon who are you then <laughs> the worst of your character will be taken as the you know as as the final verdict people judge you based on the worst of your characters not the best what you do that's the world you wear a white shirt tiny dot people focus on the hey there is a dot man are you that brother who gets offended so quickly you do 10 things right but there is one stone throw at you all the 10 things are nullified finish why because the words of your mouth justifies the words of your heart comes through proceeds out of your mouth and that's it you're finished and you know what you think you're right and you don't even seek god to forgive you yes that's another point right you 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 justify your self righteous bible says and that's one of the important sins that you need to take in account from second timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 9 it's mentioned you know self seeking spirit self righteous and all those people self prejudice and all these people you may see you will know that they are totally all about i myself and me we cannot we cannot go wrong some people have you seen oh i can never go wrong because why i am holy and righteous i am a servant of god 30 years i know what it what bible is all about it's been 50 years since i took water baptism <laughs> i'm born and brought up in a christian family this and that they'll be going i all about i myself and me theories who are they they are already bunch of demons such people you know because why there are unclean spirits that are living inside and therefore they are not able to you know i gave a pause because you will it'll helps you to digest <laughs> you you thought i've gone for for a short break or something like that <laughs> i'm i'm just giving it little time sometimes i give that pause so that you you think are you that brother that sister okay let's hear from jesus now what is he trying to say luke chapter 17 verse 1 then he said to the disciples it is impossible that no offenses should come wow don't you think so this is exactly what we are talking hmm? because it is one holy spirit who reveals through jesus and who reveals through me it is one holy spirit who writes the bible and it can't be any different what is jesus saying here take a note of it luke 17:1 it is impossible that no offense should come if that is your attitude you are already marching towards the pit of the hell i'm telling you you are marching towards the devil side because all is well and all that you are not taking a note of what jesus said right i forgot in the book of matthew it is in, it is definitely there right you if you if you turn your bibles to book of matthew he would have said um you know uh, there is there is a lot of troubles and people will come and torture you torment you for my sake and still you will make a choice not to you know give away all that you have, all that i have taught and because they hate me first before you know they hate you and how to deal with a sinning brother all that he would have told in matthew 18 you can take and read 15 to 20 i don't have time to refer there so in this world my beloved brother sister i'm talking to you i'm talking especially to believers why because they are the ones who walk like a you know one little thing is enough to spark them they will be burning in fire why because of self righteous attitude i'm linking it to a passive sin called a self righteousness you think all others are sinners unbelievers especially and even believers 
or within Christian congregation, Catholics, they are like third grade. Yeah? Second grade will be CSI, traditional Christians or something like that. First grade, oh, I'm a spirit for coming from Pentecostal background, you know. What you people weren't doing, I ended up doing. And unbelievers, no way they can even touch their shadow. Forget about you know, coming close to them. Who are you? You are already judging your brother. We've forgotten that all of them are children of God. Hmm? All of them are creations of God. They are as, he, as much as God respects you, He respects them. All are equal under the grace. And therefore you walk under this you walk by this law or you walk by this expectation. Ah, no offense can come near me. Why? Because I am walking according to the word of God. May it be true. I'm, I'm not de defending your character here. I'm not questioning. Maybe you are the true brother in Christ. You are the true sister in Christ. Agreed. But this commandment is from the devil. Why? People will definitely offend you. <laughs> and who is offending you? The same devil who had instilled uh, that mindset in you, oh, you can never go through any offenses because God is in you, is the one who will also send agents to disprove <laughs> that what you have, you know, believed is not true. Therefore, what happens? You walk in guilt, you walk in confusion, you are perplexed, you don't know what is right, you know whether agent, you know, the devil's agent is tempting you or God himself is against you. You will be in all sorts of confusions. And Jesus makes it very, very clear. You see, Jesus' teachings are very simple. Six-year-old child will be able to understand. If Jesus was able to go to synagogue from the age of roughly between five and six and all the way until 12, he was almost a scholar. He was able to deal with scholars, man. Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes all circling him. Not sure whether Sadducees and scribes were there or not, but Pharisees surely were there. They are good enough. Yeah, they're very, very, you know, they're very intellectual people. It's, you don't never think they're very ordinary and all that. They're very intellectual people, not at all easy to deal with those guys. Complicated in nature too. Because why? They are full of offense. <laughs> they're the best examples that they cannot walk with uh, expecting zero offense. Yes, people will come and they will be rubbing their shoulders. You know, while I was in school, there used to be guys who were like well built and all that, right? They don't look like, you know, they are in 8th standard. They will look like as if they are in 11th standard or 12th standard. So guys, like especially me, I was so short until I was 10th standard. Now also I'm not too tall, but I'm not too short either. Moderate height. Yeah, I picked up that height after 10th standard. But until then, uh, <laughs> these guys you know, who are all tall, no, they will come and they will be just rubbing their shoulders. Because they know definitely I cannot hurt them. Right, but still, sometimes I get angry and I end up, you know, beating them, and I get beaten up like anything back, and I cry. Uh, but once or twice, um, you know, I really went mad. I don't know who Christ was. I wasn't Catholic, and I didn't know what Bible was all about and all that. I, I end up, I end up, I end up hurting them so badly. Uh, one guy I remember. Not with a stone or something like that, but uh, using my bare hands only. I punched him like anything, left, right, center. Big fellow, big fellow. He started to cry like a baby. <laughs> this is how an attitude of a Christian, and that was the first and last. I never would want to manhandle. I'll be playing with my cousin brothers and sisters and all this. That is a different thing, right? Ch childhood, we all play. Not the intention to hurt like that, but that one time I really went mad. I can still remember the guy was crying and he, I was asked to bring my father and my father didn't know what to tell. <laughs> All this happens, no? <coughs> that was the first and last. I didn't know Bible, but I know what I did was not right. And that's that's how I ended. But all these fellows, no? Yeah, they, they keep irritating me. All these big guys. A bunch of buffaloes. I would blame their parents. Right? I don't know from which school they came came out and they don't know what is discipline and all that and uh, terrible. Yeah, I will blame the parents, not the children. They should also take an account of, you know, the same behavior in school. Of course, they would be having a neighborhood and you're not watching over the children. But when they, when, when they complain against your children, oh, you're getting all offended. Who are you? You're a demon. I'm sorry to say this. You're wicked in your heart. But when your child is hurt, you go and wage war against somebody. 
all right let's come out of parenthood and get into this discipleship we are learning the concept of discipleship and for which it's an important thing to understand the more you stay out of this offense as a category or a section easy for you to forgive others easy for you to receive forgiveness from god why because you will be really calm and composure to to you offense feels absolutely useless it's a parameter which really eats up your time energy emotions do you know that oh what a tremendous amount of energy i would have lost with offense and you know what you you think i don't get offended i do get offended who's saying i don't get offended even yesterday also one of the incidents i got offended with whom i won't tell you <laughs> but then in in minutes or maybe sometimes in seconds i overcome it i know it was it is not from god it is not of god it is from the devil but woe to him through whom they do come see notice the words of jesus woe to him means what curse he is cursed through whom that offense comes out in form of actions could be the dirty words dirty language bad mouthing gossiping murmuring grumbling throwing stones at people or man handling them killing them murdering them what to him cursed is he can you see jesus you know this what to him what to him he has used in matthew 23 against the pharisees directly he attacked them but after that if you see one or two places only he would have used that wo wo to the people right so that means you need to take a serious account of it it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones right two different perspectives first pers- perspective is over second perspective it's about the leaders you are the man of the house you are a leader you are the church pastor you are a leader you are a praise leader leader do not teach bible without understanding without meditating without asking for the holy spirit guidance right else you are called as what false prophet and where you deserve take and read revelation 2010 no judgment for you no judgment for you you will be straight away thrown into the lake of fire you will be your first companions many will follow you but your first bunch of companions you know who are the, who they are how many years ago they had fallen down uh, from from that earth maybe a uh, billion years ago because the earth is like 3.54 billion years old i do not know those guys will be accompanying you who had sinned against god a billion years ago before the bible was written before jesus was sent before the sin had separated us from god and without bible they are burning but with bible you will be burning there having seen jesus having hearing the having heard the teachings of jesus you burning there do you deserve in that place tell me false prophet that to without a judgment you are not seeing father's face no you will never get an opportunity atless people who try to walk righteously they get an opportunity to see who is who is that father who is my jesus okay you see him yet you are judged and unfortunately you are thrown into the lake of fire that's a different thing but you don't get an opportunity at all <laughs> and who who you think you are oh that great man of god <laughs> it will be better for you to be thrown into a lake or a sea sorry thrown into the sea take heed to yourselves we will close with 3 and 4 we will read and close take heed to yourselves heed means what take due attention take a serious note they say no that's what take heed to yourselves if your brother sins against you rebuke him and if he repents forgive him that's called as you know people who get offended no they know only to rebuke they def- they definitely do not know how to forgive you check out and see for yourself right you apply this principle to yourself you will understand what i'm saying you will end up only correcting that brother rebuking scolding shouting and all that yes what they have done is not right agreed you are that holy brother sister agreed but who are you to judge from the judgment seat of christ second corinthians 5:10 belongs to me who are you you are a demon why because you are pushing jesus out of his throne and taking his place that was the attitude of the devil and that's why he became devil right that's why offense is such a bad parameter bad animal that lives inside your heart hmm? 
It's like a serpent circling your feet and it's not going to leave you. Why? It's going to bite you enough. You're going to fall down to the earth. It's going to bite you. Offenses like that serpent which circled your feet. It's impossible to you know, pull up that snake which circled you because it took, it's taken that grip. You understand what I mean? Offense has taken grip in your heart, beloved. And it has separated you from the love of men and God. But forgive them. When they repent, saying sorry, somebody says sorry, an apology, even without that we are supposed to forgive. That's the attitude of a true Christian. You don't expect sorries and um, whatever, right? Forget it. But even after they repenting and coming to you and saying sorry, forgive them. But if you don't forgive them, oh, the forgiveness of God will never reach you. That's where we are discussing no? for a very long time. It's our 36th hour or 37th hour. We are just talking only about ask for forgiveness from God for your sins. But I'm talking from the other perspective, law of forgiveness. You think really forgiveness of God will be, will be reaching you? No, your attitude will be a hindrance. You are the violator. You are an offender. Breaking the laws and commandments. Forgiveness of God will never reach you. Tell me. Tell me if you, if you don't follow by these principles. How, how you think God is able to forgive you? Because in the same measure you judge others, you will be judged. You don't forgive others with the same measures. God will never forgive you. Will, will never be able to forgive you. Because it's a conditional statement. Verse number 4. And if he sins against you seven times in a day... And seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Jesus takes a number and Peter catches this number and he asks Jesus, I don't remember in the book of John or uh, I forgot, right? Uh, how many times we should forgive? Seven times? You know, Peter asks this to our Lord Jesus. And uh, Jesus says, no, 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 you are sticking to that number which I gave, right? In the book of Luke it is captured, but, but in the book of John, I'm not sure. In the book of John or again in the book of Luke only, I think. Um, I'm really sorry, my brethren, my sisters. right? I, I don't remember which book, okay? You all know, right? But Jesus says, hey... Not seven times. What? I told that number for an, as an example. But forgive your brother 770 times in a day per brother. Can you imagine you have 10 brothers? And per brother you have to forgive them 490 times. 7 multiplied by 70. If he, if he were to sin. Such an irritating brother. And you have another 5 sisters. Such irritating sisters. Frustrating sisters. Across the relationships. Right? Which means what? 5 plus 5, 10. 10 multiplied by 490. 4,900 times you must forgive. And the time you are awake is only 16 hours. Can you imagine? In 16 hours you are able to forgive 5,000 times somebody. That is the true character of a disciple in Christ. You are able to do that. Hmm? Are you ready to do that? If you are not able to do it all these days, fine. But are you ready to do it? Yeah? And Jesus said, you know, Peter was very smart and he picked this number seven times, right, Jesus? The other day you were saying seven times. This is where he says seven times. <laughs> and then Peter, uh, you know, picks that number very smartly and uh, he asks, uh, is it right, Jesus, seven times? And Jesus says, <laughs> come here, Peter. Peter is very, very naughty, right? And innocent guy too. And he says, Peter, it's not just seven times. Come here. It's 770 times. Come, let me teach you a little bit of mathematics here. And Jesus taught a very good mathematics to him. And he said, according to this mathematics, you are supposed to forgive 490 times. Oh, Peter now bites his nail. How is it possible? Huh? No way. Yeah, I found it. I was searching for that. Matthew 18. In the book of Luke, it is captured very well seven times. Matthew 18 Verse number 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but to 70 times seven. <laughs> but previous verse, right? Lord, then Peter said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, right? That right word is missing there. That's it. 
<laughs> all right i hope you understood it was a very good discussion very useful learning right so from today say no to offense say yes to forgiving people especially those who come in repentance poor fellow is already in such a bad state why would you offend him more or why would you give him more pain heavenly father we want to thank you lord for this wonderful time and opportunity we really appreciate that you have taught us from the concept of offense may we be not an offender violating the laws and commandments neither do we get offended nor do we treat people who offend us in a harsh way may we be forgiving them in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists please spend some time listening to these teachings it will only help you build you as a better person share it with your friends relatives be an instrument in the hands of god please share this good news of gospel across ends of the earth and pray for our ministries 10 seconds at least remember me in your prayers god bless you i'll see you soon